It's alright, mate. It's okay. I know what to do. Right, just pop that under your head. There you go. Here you go. Okay. What's up, Sickle Cell Warriors? It's Dr. O, and the grind never stops. That short clip we just saw was a video of somebody having a seizure. People with sickle cell are much more likely to have seizures due to their increased risk of having strokes. According to the AHA Journal, by the age of 20, 11% of sickle cell patients have strokes. And by the age of 45, 24% of sickle cell patients have stroke. Shout out to my loyal subscriber, Diaz. She actually requested that I make a video on this and I agree with her that it's an important topic to address. So I wanted to briefly give my thoughts about it and what we can do if we ever come across a seizure or a stroke. So briefly in this video, we're gonna go over what are the symptoms of strokes and seizures and what we can do when someone is having a seizure or a stroke attack. As sickle cell warriors, we are well aware of all the different types of complications that may occur as a result of having sickle cell, including pneumonia, acute chest syndrome, and strokes. And the reason why strokes occur in our body is because sometimes during a sickle cell crisis, our blood flow to the brain is blocked and as a result, we have a stroke. Now fortunately, I've never experienced a stroke from my experience. But if you're a sickle cell warrior who did experience a stroke, or even if you just have sickle cell, you should find this video helpful. What are the symptoms of stroke? Well, I wanna share with y'all this acronym called FAST, which I learned in school. So I'm actually kind of excited to share it with y'all. FAST is an acronym that pretty much is used to describe the symptoms of strokes. We have F for face, Drogginess, A for arm weakness, and S for speech difficulty, T for time to call 911. You call 911 assuming that you see any of these three symptoms when a stroke may be occurring. So essentially, if we ever experience some of these symptoms, the first thing we should do is call 911, head to the hospital, and over there, what they will most likely do for us is do some brain imaging and blood transfusion. Now, as for seizures, as you may have seen in the clip we saw, the symptoms of seizures include uncontrollable jerking movements, sometimes it can include difficulty breathing, and muscle contraction. During the actual seizure event, what we're supposed to do is stay with the person and remain calm. Do not restrain the person, which pretty much means that we should not try to hold them back from having the seizure, let it be a natural, just let it kind of wear out type of thing. We also want to make sure to tilt the person's body to the side and after the seizure, tell him or her what has happened during the experience. According to the CDC, we should call 911 if the person has never had a seizure before, the person has difficulty breathing or waking after the seizure, or if the seizure lasts longer than five minutes. I'm making this video to just briefly address sickle cell and strokes. Uh, I wanna bring more awareness to that topic and hopefully be more aware of what you need to do. Or if you know someone with sickle cell or someone who may be having a seizure or stroke in general, you can help escort them to the hospital and have a better idea of what to do during these times of stroke and seizure episodes. Anyway, Sickle Cell Warriors, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I appreciate you all watching to the end. Please subscribe if you enjoy the content and thank you so much for blessing me.